I just wanted to give a big thanks to everyone who had a part of moving everything. Of course, uh, you know, my business partner, Mark Chingress. Uh, the tireless efforts of the staff. I mean, the staff has been spectacular. Um, working long, hard hours to get the place open. Um, and dusty, construction-y conditions. Um, they've been amazing. All, all the construction staff here have been great. Um, from Hassan, who did most of the counters and millwork. Uh, Joe, our electrician, has been great. Um, and Aaron, uh, his apprentice, felt like a girl. Uh, and of course, the construction guys, Hank and his two sons. Uh, um, Aaron, spelt the guy way. And uh, Todd, who's our site supervisor. Um, they've been great, just trying to help us out, trying to make it, this opening happen. Um, so yeah, and I just wanna, <coughs> excuse me, I just wanted to thank everybody for, uh, for just the incredible work that they put into this place. Uh, it's a new era for Silver Snail, and I can't wait to get it started. So, let's go. Oh, I love this section. This is really cool. Yeah? Yeah, no, because it suddenly turns into a clothing store for a, a little bit, but it actually feels like a clothing store. It's really cool. Um, I was just watching, it's like the amount of riots and kids going No, we're going to put, we're going to put, uh, like, behind the door. We're going to put a recessed light box. And maybe right on that corner, we'll put, like, a big blue plastic thing that's a super snail inside the super snail. Sorry, hey. to, sorry to bug you, but I loved your story the first time you came into the snail. Tell me the story that the... the like how you found the snail and... Oh, the first time I found the snail is that we had just come back from uh, a trip to Captain George's, which used to be yeah. up on Markham. And we were like, uh, my friend Kevin and I, we were giddy with the fact that it was the first time we'd ever found a comic store in the city, because we knew about Baca, but that wasn't a comic store. Yeah. And and um, uh, we were on our way back to the train station. We just happened to walk down Spadina and across Queen, and Ron had all these covers in the window that he had ripped off and glued <laughs> yeah. to the window. And my honest reaction was this, what asshole did this? That was honestly my reaction. Because there were covers up there from comics from the 60s, and I just could not believe anyone would have torn them off and glued them to the wall. Yeah. And I, uh, the door was open, so I opened the door to find out, who did this? Who put these covers? Because I was 12 years old at the time, and I was very indignant. And I honestly remember that uh, there were people inside still sawing things, because it, it was not going to be open for about two weeks. And I believe Ron was sort of there, and he said, I did that. And I, I knew who he was, because I'd been buying comics at back, and I said, oh, this is like a store now? You're going to have your own store? He said, yes, and it was open on May the 6th. I remember that very clearly. May the 6th, yeah. And so right. on May the 6th, to make a point of it, I came down at like 9 in the morning. I think it opened at 10. And I sat. You used to have to step down to get into the front door. And I sat there cross-legged with my friend Kevin, and we just sat there until it opened on May the 6th. And I bolted in, and I know I bought Captain America comics, because that was what I was collecting at the time. That's super cool. And, but I really remember I was angry at him for tearing the covers <laughs> off, because there was like some John Romita Spider-Mans and even some Steve Ditko ones that he torn the covers off, and and he said they were slightly damaged comics. And I kept going, but you could have given them to me. <laughs> like it just seemed wrong to do that. I have never torn the cover off a comic ever. And just what what a, what a cool thing to do to one of these one of these funny books. That was really cool. Thanks for coming, Pat. Oh, you're very welcome. And bring for your family. That's yeah. it's really cool. And and I went to bed this morning at five. So <laughs> that I'm, sounds like the last. Week for yeah, me. I was yeah. so sleepy I could literally not drive the car. So my my wife had to drive the car for me this morning because I could not have been able to. Well, I would have killed a few. people. <laughs> what I would have said. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we'll, we'll look around. And enjoy. Yeah, I'm, I I am enjoying. Actually, what I really love is the idea that you can get a morning coffee and stuff in here. That's really brilliant. Oh, that's so cool. Everything about this is just gorgeous. Oh man, the view of the street that's Alright, if you got anything to purchase, throw it up here and we will be making a family for this. Would you like to buy Elvis? Yeah, he's Elvis catching. No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm going to get the Elvis catch. Where's the Elvis catch? You don't want to buy the Elvis. I don't. Is that an actual old Kirby fly? Holy cow, yes it is. This is Elvis there. Wow. We still have our signature bins. These things yeah, are really forever. Really this is completely great, man. This is Thank you. Fantastic. And it looks like a real modern store. Yeah. All the 70s wood is gone. We're gonna. I miss the. Dead I mean, rats. 
The go go checks are going yeah. south. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I want to. I want to pay homage to the past, but I definitely we want to step forward. And no, totally. And the fact that where you're located, I mean, it, you know, where when I was a kid, Sam the Record Man and yeah, yeah. everything else used to be here. This is going to turn the store into a landmark in Toronto. I think this is going to be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Let's like, <laughs> Yes. As long as the comics industry alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The comics industry so. alive, and this store is going to be the flagship for it. I mean, uh, you know, the snail was already the place where everybody in the universe used to come when they come to the city, but now you're going to have to be kicking them out. I hope so. Get out of the damn building, Dylan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not buying the Elvis hat. It's not happening. What? It's Elvis for you. It's very lovely, but it's four hundred dollars. To do this officially, Kate, you should actually be the one handing the money because you were my child. Ah. And that would be so much cooler. And here at the store, which is something that we have not traditionally done, because Ron is was against it right from the start. Um, brand new at the brand new store. Get a free bag of more with every cup. Woohoo! So, wow, Ron was like, well, all right, Ron was very against that, so. <laughs> that, that's all? Okay, purchase my car. <laughs> so it's 48.65. That'll do. Let me give you that part. <laughs> hey, you got three so arts. It's some change. Not a whole time. It's some change. Come here, can I hit you once? And you, and you know you're like, you hit that. You know, Frank's waiting to you. Did you hand the change to me when you told me that? You made the cash now. Hey, 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 hey. She, she's the final good product. She's kept the money for herself. The first customer, and it's a girl. Oh, girl. Yay. Yay. A girl who buys and enjoys coffee. We survived the valid years. We survived this. Thanks again for everybody coming. Come, high school time. Your father needs to go back to sleep. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks for coming.